Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for this segment, we're going to talk about a couple of hurricanes. Um, the first one is in the Atlantic off the U.S. East Coast. It's Hurricane Chris, and Chris has been lingering off the U.S. East Coast for a number of days in a warm water pool and has been steadily gathering strength and as of this afternoon has finally transitioned to hurricane status with a 980 millibar minimum central pressure according to the national hurricane center and 85 mile per hour maximum sustained winds now chris is expected to track off to the north and east potentially threatening uh, Newfoundland as an extra tropical storm and uh, but overall the main impacts to the US East Coast are expected to be waves and heavy surf. Now I'm going to look at the satellite imagery of Chris. We have uh, some rather striking satellite imagery for Chris and I'm going to go ahead and animate this loop. So we can see Chris swirling around off the U.S. East Coast, and in the most recent frames, the eye becomes more well-developed as the storm deepens over warmer water. Now, since Chris had been stationary for a while, it had probably suppressed its own development. The stationary storms, even over a warm water pool, as, as was the case with Chris, tend to generate upwelling through a process known as Ekman pumping, and this upwelling is thought to have suppressed development in, in the northern quadrant of the storm. Since Chris is on the move now over warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, it's likely to remain a hurricane for the next day or so before it gets further to the north and east over cooler waters and possibly interacts with a, a, a trough sweeping in. Now, the remnants of barrel are also still showing up in the satellite picture, but these remnants are not thought by the National Hurricane Center to have much chance of, de of developing into a storm, but we should probably keep an eye on them. For climate change related features, I, I just do want to note that the Atlantic Ocean is presently warmer than normal in many regions. This is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. And off the U.S. East Coast, temperatures are between about a half a degree Celsius to a degree Celsius to three degrees Celsius or more in certain hot spots. And there's a large, and this is above average temperatures. So when I say 0.5 to one degree to three degrees Celsius, these are anomalies. And far offshore, the middle, the central North Atlantic, stretching all the way up to England, is, is much warmer than normal. Now this is in juxtaposition to a cool pool off Greenland, and this cool pool is likely influenced by Greenland melt. And we recently had large glacier, glaciers calving off of Greenland, Greenland from the northeastern quadrant. And uh, that's an example of the interaction between warming bottom waters and glacial interaction with the ice face, which increases the speed at which glaciers flow into the ocean. So, this difference in, in water temperatures between these two creates a bit of a dipole and might kick off some instability for storm formation later in the season. But right now, the primary concern is these warm waters near the U.S. East Coast. So any storm approaching the U.S. East Coast will have more fuel. Now, of course, atmospheric conditions will also play a part. And so if there's a lot of wind shear storms, storm development will tend to be suppressed. And we're looking at a transition toward El Nino in the Equatorial Pacific. And since the Equatorial Pacific is presently quite warm, we might expect a bit more wind shear, although that statement comes with a lot of uncertainty. Now, moving over to the Pacific, we presently have a tropical cyclone, Typhoon Maria, that is threatening mainland China. It's currently in the process of approaching the Chinese coast. 
I'm going to pull up a, a graphic here for you. Hit the load. Okay, I seem to be having some trouble loading the warning graphic from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. There we go. So presently, Maria is just north of Taiwan and is approaching the coast of China south of Shanghai. And present maximum sustained winds are in the strong category 2 range to weak category 3 range, around 110 miles per hour, uh, approaching 115 miles per hour, but this storm is expected to continue to weaken as it approaches the coast. One of the main concerns for this storm, and I'm gonna go ahead and look over here near China, is, is rainfall. The storm is, is likely to inject a lot of precipitable, moist, precipitable moisture over the Chinese coast, and, and this could dump a significant amount of rain over eastern China and parts of central China. And in addition, I just want to show an ocean graphic, which is, is pretty stunning. We have some extraordinarily high waves in the, in the range of 15 meters, uh, which, is, which is nearly 50 feet. So, so very high waves approaching the Chinese coast, likely due to the oncoming storm and, and bottom features, which are helping to enhance wave action in this region. So, so something to, to keep an eye on, certainly for coastal communities in China. I also want to look at sea surface temperatures in this region, just to give a general comment on climate change related features. Now, there's a very warm water pool off the Philippines, which has been tending to enhance cyclone development, but we've had a lot of cyclones run through this area south of Japan, which has churned up a lot of water, generated a lot of upwelling, and that has tended to cool off sea surfaces in that region. There's a much warmer than normal pool off of eastern Japan, which recently enhanced some extreme rainfall events over western Japan due to a high pressure system circulating moisture in both off this warmer than normal water pool and in from the tropics. So these features, uh, these warmer than normal ocean features are something we will want to continue to watch as typhoon season continues for the Western Pacific. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you again soon.